Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship this morning on this the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, just a few announcements for you all this day. Again, another quiet week up in the office. Um, tomorrow is Phyllis Thompson's funeral at Myers Hall Fire Hall at 11 a.m. There's a bunch of other things on your schedule and in your bulletin to look at, including our new podcast, information about the Memorial Garden Project, school supplies, all those things. So please do make sure you um, check that out this week. The, um, do I have someone from council here that was announcing something this, at this service? I don't see any of them standing up. Um, the council this week uh, talked about um, offering and passing the plate, and um, starting August 7th, an usher will come around and start collecting offering. We'll be using those closed pews to do that, so we'll return to a little bit more normalcy like that, but we didn't feel comfortable enough passing a plate down and having everyone touching and spreading germs that way. So that is starting August 7th. Um, so we'll leave that plate there, but after that we'll, we'll um, go back to a little bit more different way of doing that. Um, two prayer requests. Um, many of all, last week I announced Phyllis Thompson was had taken a turn for the worse. She and she passed away last Sunday at about 11.30, 12 o'clock um, at her home. So her funeral is tomorrow. Uh, another prayer request is Evelyn Hawker had some significant heart surgery this week. Um, had some complications that, but it's surprisingly home and I believe doing well. Um, so as well as you can be after having uh, heart surgery. So um, we want to keep Evelyn in our prayers and also Phyllis's family as well. Are there any other prayer requests from the congregation? Let us sing a song. Good morning. Please rise as you are able. Let's start the, the music portion of the service with uh, Holy is the Lord.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray, and you gladly give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us your abundant mercy. Forgive us those things that weigh on our conscience, and give us those good things that come only through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. first reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 18, verses 20 to 32. Then the Lord said, How great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how grave their sin. I must go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me, and if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous and the wicked? Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not give or give it for the 50 righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom 50 righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again, he spoke to him. Suppose forty are found there. He answered, for the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose thirty are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. He said, let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. And then he said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose 10 are found there. And he answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reading from Psalm 138 begins, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They they will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. 
You will make good your purpose for me, O Lord. Your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hand. I invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Teach us, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend. And you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answered from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are in bed with me. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You all may be seated. And we had a couple of kids. Thomas, you want to come up? You want to come up, Sarah? You got to go back to your seat, Sarah. Oh, we got more. Can you sit up? You guys want to sit down? Hello. When I do this, what do you think I'm doing? Praying? How about chin rest? Do you think it's a chin rest? What if I do this? What's this look like? A fall, but do some people, when they pray, hold their hands like this? Yes. Why do people hold their hands like this or like this when they pray? What do you think? What do you think? Here, hold your hands out like this. What do you want... See, it's really hard when, you, when your hands are not together because they feel like they got to do stuff, right? Like, yeah, like, don't you feel like you got to move around? You got, all of a sudden, when your hands are out like this, you notice there's something shiny here. Ooh, I got to go play with this, right? Or you, all, all of a sudden, you look on the floor and there is a car sitting on the floor and you got to go play with the car, right? But when you hold your hands like this, you can't do much with them, right? You can't, like, you can do this. That's a little weird, right? But your hands are like this. You can't really do much. And so all you get to do is you get to focus on holding your hands together. So now your mind is is concentrating on keeping your hands together. And now you can pray. And how do we pray? What are some ways that we pray? What do you do before you eat meals? do 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 you guys say a prayer? What's the prayer you say? Good little Lutherans you are. Do you do the God is great? God is good. And we thank him for our food. 
by his hands we all are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Amen. Have you guys ever been to Marlow Ridge? They do different prayers there, right? I Do you know the Superman prayer? Oh, it's fun. I don't know if I can do it in front of all these people and embarrass myself. We should try it, though. Okay. Do I remember? Thank God. I forget the words. But it's, there's sometimes you can sing when you pray, like the Superman prayer or the Johnny Appleseed prayer. The Lord is good to me. And so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun and the rain, the apple seed. The Lord is good to me. Amen, 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 amen. So sometimes you can sing and pray. That's the neat thing about singing. Whenever we sing, we're also praying too. So you're doing two things when you're, when you're singing. You're singing, you're making, you're making music, and you're praying. So sometimes our prayers can be real formal, like grace. Sometimes they can be really simple. Like, dear God, please help me get a good grade on this test. Dear God, please help some, this person in need. Dear God, please protect me from the monsters that scare me at night. Sometimes our prayers can be really simple. Sometimes they can be really formal. Sometimes they can be fun, like the Superman or the Johnny Appleseed prayer. Sometimes they can be really serious. But you know what God wants you to do? God wants you to pray. Because God likes talking to you. Just like I like talking to you guys and getting to know you and what your favorite color is and what your favorite band is and your favorite music and your favorite toys, God wants to know those things too. So when in doubt, when you get bored, when you got nothing else to do, Don't just roll on the floor like Isaiah. Take your hands, put them together, and get and talk to God and tell him how you're doing. So can you guys let's let's practice. Can you guys hold your hands and let's say a quick prayer. Everyone in the congregation too can repeat after me. And you guys too. Dear God, we thank you for your love. And we thank you for the gift of prayer. Amen. See? Simple. So, make sure when you pray, you fold your hands together so they don't do all kinds of crazy things, and make sure you always talk to God, okay? All right, you guys can go back to your seats. Yeah, night, do night-night prayers, too. All right. Oh. Say, yeah. Say, yeah. Thomas, sit down, please. Come here. Since you're going to stand there, I need to use you for illustration. So the other day, this little guy here, he asked me, it was Wednesday, he asked me to take him to the basement to play because it was hot outside. And I was thankful because usually in the afternoon when I get home from work, he likes to go on the back deck and play. And so I was very thankful that he said he wanted to go play in the basement that was air-conditioned. Um, so I said, sure, let's go downstairs. So we go downstairs, turn on all the lights. I sit down on the couch, get my phone out, get all comfy. And all of a sudden, what do, you, do you remember what you said? No, you said, Dad, there's a bug. A yeah, a spider. And, Tom, and I say, well, just go play someplace else. But Thomas was insistent, this is the area that he must play in. So, I go over, and I take care of the bug, the spider. I was supposed to take it outside. (laughs) So, I go, I take care of the spider, sit back down. Yeah, he says, Dad, there's another bug. Apparently, these spiders had colonized this portion of our basement. They set up a local government, HOAs, were building businesses in a main street, getting ready for a parade to celebrate their independence. So I go and I take care of this bug again. Sit back down. Dad! This time the bug was dead. So I took care of that. 
So after I take care of all these bugs, make sure the area is swept clean of spiders and dead bugs, I asked Thomas, well, buddy, when you get older, are you going to take care of the bugs for your little boy or girl, just like your dad takes care of them? Yeah, he said no. You can go sit with mom if you want. He just smiled at me, and as Thomas always does, and went back to playing. You know, it's amazing the jobs that I have to do now as a dad. Truth be told, I don't like bugs. I, we've been dealing with ants at our house for like the last two, three months. And every time I see them, I feel like they're all crawling over me. There's not enough soap in the world to make me feel clean after I see a bunch of ants. But somehow, whenever Thomas asks for help with bugs, spiders, they don't bother me. There was this one time Thomas and I went fishing, and we, we had to cross this bridge. And once we got over on the other side of the bridge, it was really muddy, and our shoes got stuck in the mud, and they weren't good to walk back to the car and that. So after we got done fishing, we took off our shoes, and we're going across this bridge, but this bridge was made out of that plastic wood, and it was baking in the sun. It was hot. And so going as fast as we can across this bridge, I'm about five, ten feet ahead of Thomas, and all of a sudden... Thomas just lets out this scream. He can't go any further. His feet are burning. And I turn around and immediately drop everything that I'm holding in my hands, and my feet are on fire at this point, but I run back and I pick him up. And I'm holding it, I'm rubbing his feet, and I'm telling him, it's okay, it's okay, don't worry. And we got off that bridge somehow, and he was safe. It is amazing to me that that Thomas's father and Isaiah's father in heaven loves them more than I do. Because I would do anything for these two. Yet, as Scripture tells us, our father in heaven loves them more than I could. It doesn't make any sense. How is that even possible? Yet, we know it is. There is nothing in the world that I wouldn't do for my boys. They are my world. And don't get me wrong, they drive me nuts. If you're at our council meeting on Monday night and you saw the show they put on right at 6.30, you know. But when they need something, when they need anything, we try to find a way to make it happen. That's how Pastor Diane and I both were. Pastor Diane has endured so many train-watching outings as a person who has no interest in trains whatsoever. All because our boys love them. We want the very best for our boys. To give them the very best childhood experience. And I get that the world is not a perfect place. And that there are many dads out there who do not value their fatherly responsibilities. I know there have been many times in my uh, last five years of being a dad that I have failed in my fatherly responsibilities. But when I do fail, I, have, I, I, I know that their Father in heaven will provide when I cannot. Rereading Luke 11 this week reminded me of just how captivating the language is that Jesus uses in response to his disciples' request to teach them how they ought to pray. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus teaches his followers to pray during his Sermon on the Mount. Very different scene, a very different style. Yet Luke presents the Lord's Prayer very differently, very intimate. Did you catch it? Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Back in Luke 9, verse 9, we learned about John's fate. This is John the Baptist. Herod is perplexed by all these rumors he's hearing about Jesus, and people are trying to figure out who this new person is. Is he Elijah? Is he another prophet who has come back? Is it John the Baptist? Has John been raised from the dead? But Herod says, John, I beheaded, it, but who is this that I hear about? John is dead. Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Why would you want to be taught to pray like a dead man taught his disciples? There's some interesting parallels between John and Jesus John the Baptist had followers, just like Jesus has followers, disciples. 
people traveled with John and learned from him just like Jesus' disciples travel with him and learn from him. The state arrested John and murdered him because he was a leader of a movement that sounded a lot like tearing down the status quo. Now that John has been killed, the state needs to make sure that the movement doesn't continue in John's absence. The state is now going after his followers, most likely. John's followers are meeting the same fate as their leader. They're being thrown into jail to eventually be executed by the sword. The cross is just simply left there to rot until they die. John's followers knew the dangers when they agreed to follow John. And I'm sure John talked to them about those dangers. He likely talked to them about the importance of staying strong even in the face of death. And probably even gave them some resources and tools in order to keep their faith as a sword is being raised to their necks. I believe he gave them something very similar to Jesus' prayer to say when they had no words left to say. The longer Jesus' disciples stick with Jesus and learn from him, the more and more it sounds like Jesus is just another John. And it's only a matter of time before the state takes Jesus up, kills him, and comes after them. Their request is not simply based out of curiosity, but is asked out of necessity. Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. So that when we are scared and facing death, we might have something to say. And so Jesus teaches them the Lord's Prayer. He says, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. This prayer, it's so simple, yet it's so complex at the same time. In just a few short words, we, we cover the entire gambit of our needs. Food, shelter, forgiveness, all while recognizing the sacredness of our Father in heaven. I've said this prayer countless times in my life. It's the prayer that we use as a family before we go to bed each night. I've said it while sitting on the floor of a hospital room holding a woman who just lost her mother and is in grief. I have said it into the ears of those who are actively dying. I have said it while holding newborn babies. I have said it with youth at youth groups, at youth gatherings. I have said it when I have been very happy. And I have said it when I have been very sad. I have said it even at 2 a.m. as I'm holding a little boy, trying to rock him back to sleep after he woke up from a bad dream. It's a good prayer to say at all times, but it's also a good form for us to use when we pray. You don't have to say the same words, but it's a good form to follow when we pray to God. Because as you grow, your prayer life should also evolve and mature as well. You know, saying the Lord's Prayer is good, but God wants to be in a relationship with you. Imagine calling up your parents and saying the exact same thing every time you speak to them. It was a good day, I ate breakfast, I ate lunch, I ate dinner, came home, put the dogs out, watched some TV, and then went to bed. Imagine saying that to your parents every single night that you talk to them. It would get a little old after a while, right? And it's really hard to build a relationship like that. It really doesn't deepen much. You know, the older you get, the more you realize that your mom and dad are not superheroes. They're humans who have experienced and continue to experience the same kind of things that you experience. And all your mom and dad want to do as you get older is stay connected. Being in a relationship with God means the longer you do this thing called being a Christian, the closer you get to God. And your conversations with God do not have to be so formal or memorized. Your conversations, your prayers can truly come from the heart just like your conversations grow deeper with your parents as you mature. But realize this way of praying, it takes time, it takes work. So how do we get to that point in our walk and journey with God? Well, Jesus has a parable for that. It begins with first understanding the nature of God. Ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. 
But Pastor Matt, Pastor Matt, I pray all the time for stuff to happen, for me to win the lottery and it never comes true. I pray all the time for people to be healed and yet they never get better. Did I not pray hard enough? Did I do something wrong? Joel Olstein, another prosperity gospel preacher, say that this passage is proof that you just need to pray really, 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 really hard. And God will give you whatever you want. And if you don't get what you want or need, you're just not praying hard enough. You didn't ask the right way. While this theology has led Olsen and others like him to make millions off of book deals and have television spots, it creates this idea that God is this vengeful grouch of a person who answers prayers by simply putting all the prayer requests in a jar, spinning that jar up, and picking prayers at random to answer. But that's not what this parable says at all. When I call my mom and dad and tell them about my day, I don't expect them to get in the car, drive to the next council meeting, and tell the council to listen to everything that I am saying and do whatever I say. Be nice, but it's not what I'm asking for. My parents want to know about my day because they care about me and they love me. They might not be able to fix what is broken in my life, but they do want to be a part of my life. And this parable speaks to that very reality. Rules around hospitality of the day require that if anyone were to knock on your door and ask for help, you would give it to them. They didn't have 24-hour grocery stores. If you arrived late from traveling, which often happened, you had to eat. And there weren't Taco Bells open until 2 a.m. You can't just tell them to go down the street and get something from the local convenience store. You are the convenience store. Even if you were in bed and fast asleep, nobody would ever turn a guest away. Jesus says that that is the reality of this day. That someone could arrive at your house at midnight and you would get up and give them something to eat. And you who are evil would do this. Imagine what your Father in heaven would do for you. The reality here is that God is not some kind of sweet party magician who goes around and only helps those who ask. Rather, God wants to be in a relationship with you. God wants you to ask, to knock, to seek. God wants to know what is on your mind, even though God probably already knows what's going on. Because God loves you like a parent loves a child. So are you silent in your prayer life because you have lost faith in God to listen to your prayers? Are you coming here today to pray or for other reasons? Is this the only time of the week that you say prayers? Prayer is one of the most important things that we do as Christians. And it should not only be done in moments like this or at moments when we're in sheer terror or when we're suffering. But it should be done at all times. At the beginning and close of each day. If we believe that God is alive and attentive to our daily needs, why is it so difficult to make time to earnestly beseech God and wait for guidance from God? If we believe that God is listening and ready to respond to our prayers, then why do we not place a higher priority on our prayer life? So here is some pastoral advice for everyone. Above all else, pray. Give thanks to God for all the good gifts you have received. Pray for those things that weigh heavy on your heart. And pray as Christ says here at the ending of our gospel. Pray for the Holy Spirit to live, move, and breathe in your life, in our church, and in our world. Pray so hard that you uh, do as Luther once said, that you tug on the ears of God, like your mom used to tug on your ears and say, listen to me. Tug on God's ears. Remind God of the promises God made to you when you were baptized. Pray and trust that you will be heard by God. And God will answer your prayers. Because just like our own parents, Our Father in heaven simply loves you and wants the very best for you and wants to be with you in all times and in all places.
Please rise as you are able, and we're going to sing a hymn, Blessed Assurance. Under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God, we give you thanks that you give us the tool of prayer. Help us to turn to you in daily conversation, even about the smallest of things. Help us to do that individually, but also as the church, that we may ask and be used in your ways to share your love in this world you so love. We pray and give thanks for the gift of creation, 
We ask that you would be with all those who harvest at this time, who are tending gardens still. We ask that we would be good stewards of what you have given us charge of, that all may have enough. We pray for our world, that you would intervene and help bring peace, that you would use us to bring peace and justice. We especially pray and ask your guidance for leaders who make laws, who govern. We ask your presence with those who keep the peace, especially emergency and first responders. We pray for those who are sick and suffering in any way. We especially lift before you Evelyn and her family, Adelie, Erica, and Otto, Dolores, Brendan's family, Francis, all those others on our prayer list and those we name before you now on our lips or in our hearts. We give you thanks for those you have brought into our life to teach us your love and who have touched this world in so many ways. We especially remember before you today Phyllis and her work in this community. Be with us as we mourn the loss of those among us and help us to trust in the resurrection. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share a sign of peace as you are comfortable with your neighbors, and then you may be seated. You may be seated. Let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done, on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done, on earth as in heaven, right here.
as you're able. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word inseparable from you. Through him you created all things, and in him you take delight. He is your word sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He called us to follow you, to sit at his feet, to go out into the world, taking nothing but the clothes on our back and staff in our hands. He called us to pray for all things that we need and to also give sacrificially to our neighbors. It is he, our Lord Jesus, who fulfilled all your will, but was also rejected by many, even one of his own. It is he who handed himself over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection. In the night in which he was handed over, our Lord took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we lift this bread and cup before you, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. And we ask you, send your spirit upon these gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Please be seated.
please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his faith. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. All right, our last song. Take to the world. Let's sing, take to the world. service begins. As we go out into the world, let us remember our mission. Go in peace. Love your neighbor.
bless you, everybody. Have a great week.